This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to see if a wet sewing machine motor can be saved. I'm not even sure that saved is the right term. Maybe I should have said something like, can it work again? But anyway, uh, about 25 hours ago, I put this uh, motor from a single model 413 into this jar full of uh, sand and dirt and decayed vegetable manner and so forth. So I'm going to take it out now and I'm going to see if I can uh, clean it up and if it'll run. You know, let some of the some of the mud and stuff drip off of it here. Eesh. <laughs> I have to say, I've never seen a, a motor look quite like this. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> okay, so. Um, I'm thinking the first thing that I, I am going to do is take it to the sink and try and rinse off as much of this... Uh, muck as I as I can yep okay so I'll catch you over at the sink all right let's see if we can rinse this motor off here <coughs> let's get a little water going Surprisingly, it does not look too bad. I should have taken that little piece of yarn on. I put a little piece of yarn on the pulley so you could see it uh, moving. Probably should have taken that off. I'm wondering about how much of this muck got inside by the armature and in the windings. But I think I can get it out of there. The other thing that's concerning is is these uh, carbon motor brushes. You know how how are they gonna be uh, after 25 hours in in there? And I mentioned before uh, the rainwater. I've always been told is soft, but I know that our soil and dirt here in the desert is very alkaline and I'm wondering about about that because I've just always read and been told and heard don't get a sewing machine motor wet and don't get oil on the sewing machine motor so I have no that you know and, and it makes sense right that it it sounds like yeah that that can't be a good thing of course the motor wasn't running when I put it in the water you know, so at, at first when I was thinking about how to do this video, oh, I see I still, I still got some muck in here maybe. Um, I was figuring then I would use my hair dryer and dry it. But I've decided not to do that because if there is dirt and mud in there, I thought, well, why would I want to dry it in there? So I think what I'll do is take it to the bench and start taking it apart and see what's the story. So I'll see you back there. Okay. You can get a little closer look at it. I'm looking, I'm looking down inside there. I saw uh, someplace around the commutator I still saw some debris but we'll get that as I start taking it apart mm -hmm. 
I wonder how deep that water got into these windings. But um, the first thing that I think I want to do is get these motor brushes out because of my concern with the uh, with the you know the alkaline alkalinity maybe is a better word. So I'm just going to pry up these end flaps. Um, I try to. <laughs> and see if the carbons are still in one piece and what they what they look like okay uh oh yeah maybe they swelled up they don't feel like they want to come out usually they just kind of slip right out okay let's see if the other one is the same if it is, then we're going to have to start uh, dismantling it, you know, and uh, maybe, maybe then we could uh, push them out gently or something with a wood stick. Oh, oops. <laughs> okay, so there's the spring <laughs> that came off of one. Mm hmm <clears throat> so so much for taking out the motor carbons huh let me try this one just again for the for the heck of it you know when I when I look um, let me get uh, my pointer if I can find it yeah when I look down in here, um, usually I can see the, the end of the carbon resting against the commutator. And, oh, maybe there you can see it. You can see daylight between there, right there. So maybe the, maybe the carbon's just totally disintegrated. I don't, I don't know. But if it is, why is this? Oops, there. I get that up. Let me see the other one. If I can. Now, see on this one, it looks to me like the tip of the uh, motor carbon is still there. Okay, I'm encouraged by that. So, let's see about uh, taking this apart now. Um, I'm going to start with the pulley. Some pulleys that I have done have a little uh, set screw inside what I call the pulley valley. You know where the where the motor belt rides. You'll see a little tiny set screw down there, and there's an infamous flat spot <laughs> on the motor shaft that that pulley uh, set screw um, you know tightens down against the flat spot and uh, this one did not did not have any kind of a oh man this thing won't even turn it's probably full of sand in there huh you know how usually you can just spin it Whee! Oh, there, it's breaking free a little bit. Oh, maybe it's just one little chunky piece of sand. How about that? Again, encouragement. But anyway, this means it's it's a push-on, push pull-off type of pulley, because I don't see a set screw. And they, they probably make a little pulley puller. <laughs> Or or some the wheel puller thing or some some little special tool, but I just put my skinny needle nose down here. Um, there's a there's a space between the plastic pulley and this uh, metal bushing here where I can see the shaft. So I'm going to squeeze that in there and just start uh, pushing it up like that and see if I can get it to a point where I can pull it off oh, 
little water in there too. So there is the motor shaft and there's no um, there's no flat spot on it. And there's the pulley. It's hard to see inside there but it looks as some kind of a metal thing so maybe it's like one of those little finger puzzles. I, I don't know quite how that works in there but you can buy replacement pulleys I have seen on several websites. Okay. Um, the other thing is now there's uh, starting out there's two longer screws that go through from the commutator end uh, through to the pulley end and then there's um, a nut and there's a lock washer behind the nut so uh, we'll take we'll take that off now when I did this before I could just get it started I put my finger on the nut and uh, at first the uh, screw just started turning and then I could feel the nut wanted to turn but I was able just to hold it with my fingertips you know I didn't have to put a socket on it to hold it or a plier or anything like that just just pushing my finger against the side of it was enough to hold it and I'll show you this uh, I'll show you this screw here Okay, and then let's see if I can, yeah, I'm still getting a little water coming out of the machine. Here's the nut and the little, um, like lock washer is what, it is what I call split. It's like cut through on one place there. And it's kind of like one side is bent up a little and one side is bent down. And then I think when you tighten it, it those two ends push together and make a tension so the nut doesn't vibrate loose. All right. So, with, with that first one out, part of the motor bracket will come off. And this is the part... Um, with the little ledge that w when you are um, the the concentric nylon wheel goes in here when you are adjusting your belt tension there's a bolt that goes through here and goes into the frame of the machine and I, I've got this in some of my videos and, and you loosen the screw and you turn that concentric against this uh, shelf and it pulls the whole motor bracket down to make more tension on the motor belt or it lets the motor and the bracket slide up a little bit to make less tension on the motor belt. So take some pictures of this uh, if you ever take a motor apart so that you you know how these pieces go um, you know back back together because they they uh, see I'm already a little confused myself here it goes like that okay so now we'll take off the uh, other We'll take off this other screw and nut and then I think we can get some more off and I think I can pull kind of like the core out of those windings. Now usually when you do that, whoops, usually when you do that and the carbons motor carp mortar brushes are in place the spring that's on this end pushes them right out the other end. They kind of pop out at least part way because there's no commutator there to rub against. Okay, so there's the other nut. 
here's the other screw and this, they're, they're all interchangeable it's not like there's a left screw or a right screw there's the um, lock washer and it, it can you know it has no certain way to go on all right now I can see that this this part of the motor bracket now wants to come off since there's no pulley and it's not screwed on there's a rubber grommet here where the wires go but you see how that's just going to come out I'm just going to slide it along the washers. This looks in pretty good shape. I haven't seen any rust yet. Of course, it was only 25 hours. And now we're getting another, a little bit better look inside. And uh, it's not bad, you know. I'm sure there's still some stuff in there, but it's not, it's not too bad. And the, this coating that they put on the wires looks okay to me but I I don't know I've always heard don't don't do anything with that don't even clean it with alcohol um, you know because it can damage that coating and the wires are all short out and so forth but let's see now if I can pull these two pieces apart here I can take this end off somewhat there's the carbon I can see one carbon edge in there and I can see the other carbon edge so maybe they just swelled up from the water you know but now I should be able to pull this out there we go look at that uh huh. Oh, I feel I feel a little couple pieces of sand. Remember when I tried to turn it before? It wouldn't really, didn't really want to turn. And I'm seeing a little bit of evidence of rust here. But let's see if I can. You know, I'll put it against that red background, and you can see those little tunnels where the uh, windings go around and they they look pretty clean I think I'm gonna have to rinse this again you know dun, dun, dun. how about that but I am seeing like I said a little bit of uh, rust I am seeing that so let's let's see what the uh, in here looks like yeah, I'm seeing the rust in here too. Let me let me find something white and wipe in there. I, hope, I sure hope this is showing up halfway decent. Oh, there. Maybe with the light coming through like that, there's rust. What appears to be rust. Maybe it's just mud. Maybe it's not rust. Maybe it's just the the mud got in there because it, if it's rust, it's coming off pretty pretty easy this is just a tissue well I have rust remover you know so let's see the other one is the same I'm sure that must have been where most of the mud uh, settled into inside there okay doesn't look bad at all I'm encouraged so the only thing that's the at risk here I think is the um, mm, motor carbons and I don't know if I should try and uh, like dry them with a the warm air from a from a hair dryer and see if they shrink I'm just imagining I guess that they're swollen you know from with water will this fit in here oh it will I'm just gonna go for it and see if I can um, see if I can get some light around the corner here on it more 
I need a bigger work table, huh? Yeah, it's not kind of hard to see in there. Right there's the end of that copper square tube. Let's see if I can get this is a this is a barbecue stick by the way. Oh, I'm not I'm not pushing very hard and it seems like it just wants to come out. So I'm just going to push, uh, oh man, I wish, is there a way to see it? Maybe from this side, oh, there you go, dummy. Right there is the tip of the carbon now. Still in the shadow there, but it's not any harder to push than, uh, oop. Okay, it popped out. Let's take a look at it. Huh. Still has the number on it. It feels a little wet, but it's not like misshapen or anything. And the, the little curve it gets from riding on the commutator is still there. I wonder if there was just some very fine uh, grit in there that kept it from moving or maybe just the water. But look it's not it's not like it's uh, coming up you know coming apart or crumbling here. It should it should um, it should leave some carbon residue from being rubbed because I have to with the new ones I like to sand a little curve into it man they look great they look like they could just be used right now wow I am I'm impressed I wonder if the new new carbons that they make nowadays to do that. I'm going to put those over here on the base of my lamp. So I got to assume that the other one's going to just come right out, right? I wonder if I could get an angle on it to to push it out this way so you could maybe see it. Okay. Maybe you can see the very tip that the spring goes on of the motor brush, a little rounded off piece is starting to come out. But I couldn't get the I couldn't get the angle um, on there with my stick, but I found a skinnier, more flexible stick. So I'm gonna try I'm gonna see if I can get that one in there. And oh, I meant to go real slow, guys. Sorry. After all that <laughs> anti-climax, huh? <laughs> but I wanted to show it coming out because I wanted to make the point that if you uh, look at or change your carbons without disassembling the motor, you have to fold this little flap back. And you have to be sure to fold it back past the opening, or you can't get the you can't get the carbon in and out. Okay. And the carbons are a snug fit. So um, I think these are five millimeter square. Let me see if I can find my little gauge thing. I forget I forget what you call this. I just recently bought this after getting a donation. Thank you. If you didn't know and you care to, you can donate to my channel at uh, paypal.me andytube. And uh, I use the money to uh, 
you know, buy buy tools like this and buy motors and buy used machines and stuff like that. Because I don't, I don't monetize my channel. I don't do advertising. Sometimes there's the weird little advertising because I use the copyright song. But um, okay, so let's see. This is uh, my little gauge here. Looks like five millimeter. And then I'll turn it to do the other side. And I'll see it's five. So it is square. And it's hard to, if I remember right, it's hard to find these um, five by five millimeter. It seems like quite a few sellers sell a 4.5 by five millimeter, which is real close. And then uh, I think before I bought one that was uh, five by 5.5 or 5 by 6 and I uh, I uh, got some uh, 600 grit I think it was sandpaper and I just started gently sanding one side of it until it would fit in the tube <laughs> but I think probably the four and a half by five millimeter would be okay I'm going to just sand this a little just to see if that carbon black, yeah, a little bit comes off. Wow. I'm just impressed with these uh, old vintage carbons. They just seem to be made so dense, I guess is the word. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, um... I don't, I don't think I need to take it apart anymore, but I am going to go back and wash it again. Um, I don't think I'm going to use any soap or cleaner. I'm going to take just a, a, you know, an old toothbrush to it just to see if this is mud stains or rust. But I can still feel just a, a, a little bit of grit. And believe me, this, this dirt in the desert, that, si that sand, wow, it just, it, it is so, so fine. It sneaks into your house and your car. And, you know, that's why people here get valley fever, because they get that in their lungs. And, it, and it's a fungus. Anyway, I'm going to go... Uh, wash it up and see if this is mud or um, rust and then we'll go from there okay so I went back to the sink and I rinsed it real well and I, I took a uh, just a, a, a used toothbrush and tried scrubbing this um, to, to see if this was just med, um, uh, mud down in there but it didn't come off so I think this is actually some some rust that started and it surprises me a little bit that it started in a uh, in the water but again the the soil here is very alkaline so I think that may have had something to do with it um, so I have my rust remover product and, and uh, the one that I use is this um, Rust-Oleum brand uh, Crud Cutter, which is the same brand of degreaser and cleaner I use. But this is called The Must for Rust. And it's, it's not expensive. It's the only rust remover I ever have used. Um, you know, I just happened to see it on the shelf in the store one day. And I said, oh, let me try that works good so I, I never looked at any others I know there are many other good rust removers but anyway the the directions for this when you use it on steel or iron you you just leave it on you you know you clean off the rust but you just let it dry and it helps prevent rust from returning for up to a year now if you use chrome um, and aluminum they say don't leave it on more than about 30 minutes and then you have to wash it off with water and dry it and I, I usually use um, on that I usually use a 50 percent um, rubbing alcohol uh, and, and rinse those but but this is uh, steel because I have a little magnet and it 
and it sticks. So I'm not going to have to worry about rinsing it off and I'll check the inside of this but it's the same thing. It's, it's sticking to it so that means it's uh, steel so um, I don't have to worry about using the alcohol and uh, by the way once I rinsed all this stuff off again I dried it with the hair uh, dryer for about 15 minutes I was just concerned how deep water got into these uh, windings if it did at all and uh, you know, first I first I held it by hand, and I used uh, high volume air and low uh, heat temperature on the dryer. And then once I got the all the moisture I could see, I just set it on a towel and laid the dryer next to it, and uh, <laughs> uh, just let it sit there and blow air in there for about seven or eight minutes, and then I I flipped it over to the other side. And uh, I had this kind of laying behind it too. So anyway, I, I got at least a 15 minute um, drying thing on that. So I'm going to see how, uh, what if any effect I can try and do to get this um, rust off of here. Maybe it would work the way that it is. I don't know. But I don't remember seeing those stains before when I took the motor apart to take those pictures. So, uh, I'm just going to put a little of this product in a little cup. It doesn't, it doesn't take much. I've had this one bottle quite a while. But I'm in Arizona, so I don't get a lot of rusty machines. You know, it's the desert. We're real dry, so... But we do we we can get flash rust when I wash the whole body. Okay, so let's just see here. Yeah, it's working. I would say uh, just the the way it does usually when I've used it on. Uh, other parts of a sewing machine that got rusty. It's got kind of this weird smell to it. My, my wife does not like the smell at all. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't use it in a large volume and it doesn't, never takes very long to do this kind of stuff so it doesn't bother me that much but you may, may want to set up some uh, ventilation you know for yourself so uh, I'm gonna go around and do this and see how much of this I can get off and I'll be back okay that didn't that did not take long two or three minutes there and I just wiped it with a little piece of clean muslin and it it looks pretty good here I suppose I could have taken a wire brush or steel wool or a little power brush on a Dremel or something and cleaned it up but I like using the chemical because I think it gets into places that the brush won't so that one I'm satisfied with move some of this stuff out of the way here and take a look in here I think when, when I was washing this and wiping it out, my feeling was, um, especially inside here, that this area was a combination of like mud and rust. And it was a little more um, mud than rust, but definitely when I took this apart before, I don't remember seeing any rust or brown staining. So, um, you can hopefully you can see inside there. So, I'm going to do the same thing with that. But um, the, the Q tip method seemed a little slow. So, I took this little watercolor paintbrush and I'm going to uh, paint it on there. 
so it kind of slathers it on. I don't want it dripping and running around, but I want to get a good coverage. And then uh, I'll let that sit for a little bit, I think. And then I'll do it again, and while maybe it's still damp, I'll wipe it out with that muslin um, cloth. So I'll be back for that. Okay, again, this only took two or three minutes. This stuff acts fast, and and this is uh, 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 what viewer old timer Lee explained to me once um, was flash rust. So I think that's why it never takes long. Um, usually I'm only doing this after I wash and dry the machine. There can be uh, frecklings of uh, rust sometimes. And he explained that that is really like a flash rust, you know. More like a quickly appearing um, light rust from exposing you know washing the machine with a degreaser and a cleaner kind of stripping it down to bare metal there so I don't like I said I don't really get real rusty machines here in Arizona um, there's just it's just the weather so dry here Okay, I'm going to see again if I can get... Yeah, it looks good. Okay. I wonder if any rust formed in these little holes. Maybe I'll run the... Maybe I'll put some on a Q-tip and run it through there. I'll bet there's a little rust in there. Yeah, none of the, the screws and the nut and, and the lock washer did not have any uh, rust, evidence of rust on them. So that's good. Okay, let's just do this other one. Now there is some, uh, ouch, there is some um, bushings or bearings to take your pick, what you want to call them, um, on here that the motor shaft goes through and rides on and so forth. But they're kind of a, some kind of brass alloy, I think. And the wiring and the commutator is copper. And those don't really rust, so those aren't any uh, problem. Now let's see that this uh, spring, there's a spring here that holds this uh, bushing here. And I don't, I don't know, where's that magnet? I don't know if that is steel or what. Yeah. Let's see the, the, uh, Kind of a brass alloy in the center. See, and the, the magnet goes to the steel, but it won't it won't stick on that. So I don't see any rust on that spring that's holding that in, but I guess I'll uh, I'll do this anyway. Now I've also noticed sometimes on painted surfaces that if this gets through a crack or chip in the paint it can it can make the paint want to come off like if you saw my uh, on the 327 Spartan when I removed the rust from the oil pan you know it just started kind of lifting the paint which was okay for me because I was gonna and I did repaint it anyway with that flat black heat what do I call the barbe barbecue grill paint okay I'm 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 happy so far I think everything is uh, 
really looking good. I'm expecting this motor to, to be able to work uh, when I get it back together. And I'll be doing that coming right up. Now, before I get started on this, I just I want to mention some parts here that I didn't mention uh, before. And that, let me let me pull one off here. It's these thin little uh, shaft washers. And uh, see, I can hardly get, let me try one from the other end. There's usually two or three on each end. And uh, here we go, this, they're coming off here. Um, there. Just, just so, so you know that in case you ever do anything like this, and uh, you're washing the parts or something, and you say, hey, where did this come from? And uh, on mine, there was uh, two on the commutator end, and there's three on the uh, pulley end of the shaft. Okie doke. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to work this the way I, I see it sitting in the machine, which would be the pulley to the right, commutator to the left, and the adjustment bracket um, down. What I think of as the, the bottom. So I'm going to put this in. See, this, this came out nice. I'm happy with how it looks inside. I think I got rid of all that uh, flash rusting and staining. I'm going to stick this in so the commutator end will go up here in this bearing on the end, okay? And just just take your time there. You're not in a hurry. Um, it's going to be simple to do. You can just watch this uh, video if you want and you can pause it. You know, don't no no worries. I can do this you can do this um, I will say on the on these uh, motor bracket that surrounds the motor you you see here's the hole for that uh, screw and knot combination well there there's can be a little dip here in the metal and then uh, where it's going to um, attached to there'll be a little nipple right there so that's to help you get it lined up and to prevent the bracket from twisting on the motor then you want to be sure that you get this uh, mounting bracket part with the dip lined up with that nipple and everything is very flat as you're as you're uh, tightening stuff up okay so let's uh, let's go back and put this in here, and and of course your um, motor brushes are not in yet, right? So you you see the commutator is going to be in there, right? And we'll put the motor brushes in later. Okay. All right. So that's kind of how it's looking now. And then uh, this bracket that goes over the, the pulley end with this part that comes up and curves out, it should, should point out like this to the right. Because that goes in, the, that, that's for that little nylon pin to hold it and this this bracket also has the dips and a nipple so that's a that's a real good way for you to be sure it's lined up and now you see how see how flat this one is here nice and whoops nice and smooth and flat against the motor but this end is not 
and you do not want to put it on like that. You've got to get both of them seated properly. Um, on on that uh, nipple part there got the bottom one lined up now the top one is flat see see how that's nice and smooth and right up against it no no gaps there okay now the the nut and goes towards the pulley end, the nut end of the screw. So you're going to put the head of the screw up on the commutator end with the end of the screw sticking out and then you're going to put a lock washer and then you're going to spin on one of the nuts Now, I usually put a drop of oil on the end of that uh, screw just to help. Uh, oh, wait. Let's see if this nut. Yeah, I better explain that. Okay. One end, uh, one side, one end. <laughs> one side of the nut is very flat with nice pointy corners. And the other side of that nut is is kind of rounded off a little bit and the, and 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 like beveled off and you want that sharp corner very flat side going on first so that it will sit flat against that lock washer And if you have trouble getting them started, give it about a quarter or half turn back where it's left first to get the thread seated. And then um, just put that, put that nut on uh, finger tight. Okay. Now on this end we have this extra piece of the bracket that has to go in here before the uh, screw. And this is the part I told you for the adjustment um, uh, nylon washer, eccentric washer. So where that nut's going to fit and adjust against these two parts that's going to go through the opening or I'm, I'm sorry around the opening the outside part so that that adjustment part sticks through the opening okay this is let me let me show you that again so on the outside edges of this bracket, they're, they're curled up to fit against this part of the bracket. And then in the middle, there's these two ledges that stick out so that that white nylon adjustment nut fits in here. And those two ledges are what goes through the uh, bottom of the bracket and then that means those two pieces that were folded up will go around the outside. So it's nice and sturdy. Okay. And then this is going to slide up here. And uh, so that the head, the, the, the screw can go through there. Now, of course, you've got to get this lined up the same way with the dip and the nipple, right? You want it nice and flat against there. Then you're going to put your adjustment part of the bracket on there like that. 
and then you, you see how the wires uh, from the windings are going to come around the side here right see these black wires and there's a space between this mounting bracket and the outside of the motor so there's plenty of room there and those wires are going through a rubber grommet so that 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 protects the wires and it just kind of keeps them in place there but see how see how loose they are so you don't you don't want to pinch it up here or something like that okay then we're going to drop our screw through the commutator end and towards the pulley end okay and we'll hold it there and if we come down here now we'll see the end of that screw get these out of the way we'll see the end of that screw sticking out and we'll put our other lock washer and nut right on there now you'll notice that the screw doesn't go through the nut as far on this one because of this double bracket thing up here at the top I mean you have this bracket there and then you have the adjustment bracket over the top so it's like twice as thick so here where you put it through you see how far that that screw is sticking out but on this one it's like almost flush with the nut okay so it kind of sits in the machine like this right and you've got you've got these going down to your um, terminal where you plug in and you've got your mounting bolt going into the frame of the machine here with that big white adjustment um, disc there right and and then we we know that our bracket is flush against the motor real nice everywhere no problem so it's not all uh, kind of cockeyed and weird so then I'm just going to um, kind of let me move my camera down I'm just going to hold that nut with my fingertips and I'm going to tighten this screw now these screws of course you want to be nice and firm because the motor is going to vibrate like crazy now if, if you if you can't do that with your fingertips you can put a, a wrench or a socket and it's 11 30 second you know and and uh, the problem is with the with the socket on this end is the rubber grommet but you can still get it on the tip with uh, a nut nut driver handle or your little ratchet handle and and hold it steady while you tighten the screw or hold the screw steady while you tighten the nut you know whatever works for you but you want it nice and nice and firm and the uh, lock washer will prevent that from vibrating off then so we'll we'll do it the same way I'm just going to put my finger against the side of that usually with the lock washer I can do this without a wrench but if you need the wrench don't hesitate to, to do it use it because you want this very nice and firm right oh looks terrific doesn't it see you did it no big deal you got this all mounted up the next step we're going to do is 
to put our carbons, our, our carbon motor brushes, back into the holders and close them in the flap. Hmm. <laughs> so I have my two brushes here and the two and the two springs, and they really look great and they feel great. I'm kind of wondering if I should have used the hair dryer on them, but the way they reacted to the sandpaper seemed very normal to me, and they're they're not leaving, um, you know, any of the black carbon all over my fingertips or anything. So I think I'm just going to try them like this. Now the the. Uh, spring should just go right back on the little nipple that sticks up here. Uh, let's see, I think maybe this way was before. You can kind of push them and twist them, usually. Let's see if that works here. But you definitely, I think they're going to be better if they're on there. So if you, if you twist them backwards, they're going to go on easier. Um, what I mean backwards, I guess, is is left. If you if you let's see if I can if you twist them to the right, it makes the coils tighter and smaller diameter. But if you twist it to the left, they they open up a little bit. So by twisting it to the left, this spring went on the brush all the way. So I think that's a good plan. Uh, let me see if this one will do the same. Put it on there and push and twist to the left. And it got on about halfway. There we go. There we go. Now when you put these in, you, you'll see that there's a wear pattern, like a shallow C. And, and, it, and it makes sense because if this is your commutator and this is the, the um, let's see if I can get out here, this is the C, it, you, you want them to go on like that, the wear pattern onto the commutator. Because if you turn them like this, only the tips of that C are going to be a, against the copper commutator and you'll have a a gap in there and it's just going to be uh, noisy and slow and it's going to have to wear all over again that's this new C pattern so you, you see the commutator here it's like that so you want your um, C pattern to, to kind of go the same way and we'll stick it in the hole, and since they're square, they sh they should go in uh, good. Come on here. I think I've got this all the way opened up. It actually looks a little bent there. I'm not making excuses for my clumsiness. It actually looks a little bent. Let's try this other side first then. And see if that opening uh, is better. Get my C pattern on there. Yeah, see this one is going in a little bit easier. They're still pretty firm, so maybe I'll take that little barbecue stick and put it through the spring and just push that uh, brush down until it is flush. On to, hard to see there, isn't it? But I can see it's flush against the copper commutator here. So what are we going to do about this one? I wonder if I bent this one prying up that um, flap.
flap. Maybe I caused another problem for myself, huh? Besides the, the thread take up. <laughs> Let me try this again here. Yeah, it just feels restricted. So I think I might have bent this a little bit somehow. Um, let's see if I can get in here and maybe bend that piece. I don't know if you if you can see, but it looks like this is is bent a little bit out of out of whack here. So I don't know if I'll be able to gently now don't break anything. Just bend that open a little bit more. And I get my C curve onto the commutator. There. Yep. And then I'll use the barbecue stick again to gently push it down. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it's going as far down as the other one. If I can see it again. Oh, okay. I, I see it here against the commutator. Right? Yeah, it's, it's feels smooth. All right. Let's work with this problematic one first. Now, the idea is that I've got to get the spring down inside and the flap closed. Now sometimes I can just do this by pushing pushing the spring down in there and kind of holding it whoop yeah be careful that can come flying out across across your work table <laughs> um, and kind of kind of try and hold it with my uh, fingertip like the fingernail and and then closing this and I usually just push against it with a with a screwdriver. Can you see that? So let me start um, pushing this closed, and then uh, see if I can get it closed some more. Now there was a lady who wrote to me recently, or maybe it was a comment. Maybe it was a comment on uh, one of my motor videos and I'm sorry I do not remember her name but she was talking about she was having a heck of a time doing this and had the spring come flying out she's she's laughing about it and uh, she was telling me that she finally got um, a blade from a feeler gauge and put it across there to hold that spring down in there and I thought, wow, that's that's a pretty good idea, you know, because the feeler gauge is a, a thin piece of steel, and I may I may try that here because I'm kind of struggling with this. But let's see if I can keep doing it. There, we did it the old-fashioned way, huh? <laughs> so I've and, and and the spring is straight. I don't see that it's smashed up or bent or anything. Now, let me work on this just a little bit here. I don't want to pinch it because over the years I want that spring to push the mm, motor brush against the commutator as it gets worn down, right? So I don't want to I don't want to make a problem and like pinch that um, brush in there. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. That That's not going anywhere. I might just flatten that down just a wee bit more. Okay. Then I'll double check that my... Yeah, man, you just can't... I just can't... 
I just can't get the light in there very well to see that. But the brush is flush against the commutator. So let's go ahead and do that on the other side here if I can. I keep using the fingernail method. Get that spring down in there and get this flap started to close. This uh, brass alloy of this uh, tube is is uh, stronger than you than you think. Okay. Take the tip of the screwdriver maybe and push it down as I slide my finger out. There. That looks good. Alright. And then we'll spin this pulley end here. Yep. Seems pretty normal. Okay. Let me back out a little bit here so get some more room here get some of my tools out of the way and my little barbecue stick so speaking of the pulley we have to push that back on right mm-hmm so usually I'll get it started and uh, it reach a certain point then it feels uh, resistance so I just turn the motor up like this and and push it uh, straight straight down and as far as it'll go and then it's back on hey so have I got my got my yarn here it's almost dry so let me tie that back on here if I can and then I'm going to hook up my little test wire to it and we'll have the moment of truth I need to rig up some other kind of a test system like from an old pedal I just have a uh, it's supposed to be a lamp dimmer you, you plug it into the wall and then you you plug the the lamp cord into this and then it's got this uh, slide on it but this one um, wore out over the years see it wore out so it, you're, it's supposed to this is like the off and then as you slide it up the lamp gets brighter and brighter and you can use up to a 300 watt um, um, light bulb with this it will take this Leviton and uh, this motor is not more than that can handle this is probably about a 0.6 or 7 amp motor and uh, amp times voltage equals watts so 0.7 times uh, 110 volts here in the US would, would be like 77 watts uh, no yeah 0.7 yeah 77 watts so so this can take up to 300 so you know shouldn't be a problem but um, the point I'm trying to get at here is that I, I can't like turn it on slow and then speed it up it's kind of on or off <laughs> so it's really going to be the moment of truth if this thing is going to work again uh, let me let me hook that up and i'll hook this one up mm -hmm. and i'll slide my thing all the way down and see here's 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 what is at the other end of that slider it's it plugs into the wall and then your lamp cord plugs into it so it's just the wire is routed through this rheostat you know but um, so I make make sure this is off so there's no electricity then I'm going to plug it in 
and then I think what I'm going to do is just turn it on and off real quick. So if it blows up, maybe it won't catch on fire, right? <laughs> and if that works, then I'll just turn it on and leave it on, which will be full speed. You know what? <clears throat> I'm going to get my safety glasses on here. <laughs> so stand back. <laughs> if the lights go out, you'll know something happened. Oh, that, that's not bad. I expect, I expect it to be noisy from the brushes. Yeah, this, I didn't get this tied on right, but I'm sure you can hear it. You can hear the brushes, right? Uh-oh. What happened here? I think my cord... What's happened? Oh. Oh. This was almost in the off position. So that's why. Can you see the sparks in there? Yeah, they're worse than ever. But, um, just that one. The other one's not too bad. I'm going to shut this off before I wear off. Uh, when you see that, when you see that sparking like that, it means that your brushes are rough and the commutator's rough. Okay? So, that that also means that it's wearing down your brush uh, sooner than it should and it's not as efficient and you can you can you can lose a little bit of power not a whole lot in my opinion but you can definitely so i'm going to have to uh, smooth out the commutator and the brushes and i i've done videos about that before maybe i'll have to do a brush setting video <laughs> as a follow-up to this because um, people do have to change carbons and I didn't smooth out the commentator though or anything I was mostly just uh, trying to see if the motor could be saved or if it would work after being submerged in water so man that was fun I I enjoyed that I I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed uh, making it and I hope that you'll tune in next time um, for whatever video I do and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel because then I think you get notified and you don't want to miss any of my exciting videos. Hmm. Take care.